So um, how long, uh, you know, a question some people ask is, well, how long do these magnets last? Uh, so the magnet actually will stay permanent, uh, whether it's ferromagnetic or not, uh, until something happens to disrupt that uh, alignment of the electrons. So making, making them go back to that randomized arrangement. So what happens there is usually it's when the magnets are heated, right? Maybe they're left out in the sun and it's a really hot summer day, um, or if they're dropped. So maybe you've experienced this with some fridge magnets. <laughs> so if you have something that's up on the fridge with a magnet and the magnet maybe falls a few times, uh, it kind of becomes a worse and worse magnet because what's happening there is the electrons are no longer in that identical pattern, that same spin. They kind of go back to that randomized arrangement. So this is a nice kind of picture to, to show you what's happening here. So ferromagnetic versus paramagnetic. So you naturally will not have them. This is actually a pretty good picture. Usually you won't have them naturally being aligned up in the same way. Um, maybe not as random as a paramagnetic would be, but they would. you may have one or two that are off. But what happens is if you apply a magnetic field to force those electrons to all move in the same spin, you now have a magnetic field that's occurring. So essentially what happens is if this were to fall on the floor, it kind of will randomize this up again, right? It will go back to this. Um, yeah, so again, so remember keeping in mind, so the difference here, both of them need to, notice there's only one arrow showing in these orbitals. You need to have half-filled orbitals. The more half-filled orbitals you have, the better probability it is of becoming a magnet. And the denser that um, material is, with the unpaired electrons, the uh, stronger, more permanent magnet it will be. So remember, ferromagnetic is really only these three elements. Everything else would fall under paramagnetism. Okay, and the last piece to this, and then we're done with chapter three, actually, um, is uh, a phenomenon known as anomalies. So the term anomaly or anomalous means uh, kind of an outlier or something that does not follow a predicted pattern. It's kind of like not doesn't follow the regular, like, you know, which one of these things is not like the other type situations. Um, so what we're looking at here is anomalies when it comes to electron configurations. There are some elements that do not follow the standard predicted configuration. So the reason why this pops up is, be is because of stability. Okay, so we mentioned already that the most stable configuration actually will be half filled, uh, pardon me, completely filled subshells. So for example, if I have a filled 1s, you know what, let me write the configuration out. If I have a filled 1s, 2s, 2p, this is very stable, right? All of my orbitals are filled. But there's actually another stipulation that is also considered to be stable. And that's something that is a half-filled orbital set. So for example, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, where they are half-filled. This is actually a stable configuration, not as stable. Don't get me wrong. This is the number one. This is a stable octet up here. But half-filled configurations can also be considered to be more stable than if some were filled and some were not. So when you have a situation where a half-filled or filled subshell is close to happening, we have an anomaly. And I'm going to use chromium as an example, and then we're going to look at copper. So chromium normally would have a configuration of this. So I'm just going to draw the last two um, orbitals that are here. Okay, so here we have chromium. Obviously, imagine that I've drawn them 
starting from 1s, right? 1s all the way up to 4s2, 3d has 4 in them. Now notice this is one electron away from having a half-filled set of 3d electrons. So what ends up happening here is um, we end up having a promotion, okay? And so what happens is, oh, it's not going to let me do it. So I'll kind of write down what's happening. So instead of having a full 4s and 4 um, d electrons, what happens is one of the electrons from the 4s actually goes into the 3d electron set or orbital set, which would then create a half-filled 4s and a half-filled 3d. So because all of them are half-filled, this is actually considered to be stable. So this is considered to be an anomaly because instead of drawing out the predicted one, it actually has a different configuration, right? Normally, we would never have a half-filled 4s before we would start. Like 4s has to be filled before we continue on. But chromium is an example of an anomalous element. Copper is another one. So copper, if we were to draw out the last two for copper... Okay, so copper, imagine again from 1s all the way up to here. Copper, if you look, is one away from having a full 3D set. So what ends up happening is one of the 4s will get moved up to the 3D, which would then cause a half-filled 4s, which is still okay, and a full 3D set. So this is called an anomaly. Now, if we go back to our periodic table site, actually, it will show the anomalies. If we go to chromium for a second, notice 4s is half filled and 3d is also half filled. And actually, I'm going to go over here for a second. Look at the expanded electron configuration. So this is an exception to the energy ordering rule. Notice it's highlighted in red. This is an anomalous element, right? And actually, every element that is in its group, oh, I, maybe tungsten is able to follow that rule. Strange. Now, anyway, typically, it's everything that's in the same column because they follow the same pattern. So, for example, we go to copper. Copper, again, is showing that it's an exception. 4s1. Right, 4s has one, 3d has a full set. Silver works in the same way. So when you're, and gold as well, if it's, I'm not mistaken, yes. So when you're looking at elements on the periodic table, if you see something that's kind of highlighted in red when you're looking at it, uh, just know that the reason for that is because of stability. So filled orbital sets obviously is the best case scenario. But half-filled is really the next best thing.